What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. My name is Joe and this is Heart and Hustle Printing. Alright, so as you guys just saw in that clip right there, we're going to be doing some half tones, right? Um, I do have simple steps and I do have a plugin to where I can to where I can separate this and get perfect half tones, right? But with this image that I'm using, they did not have a high quality image. And whenever I tried to vectorize it, it came out really, really bad. So how I did this was I got a notification from YouTube that Taino Inc. had uploaded a new video. In this video, he talked about printing half tones on a black t-shirt and it came out really, really good. So if you guys want to check out that video, Go down below and you guys can click that link there and it'll take you to that video. If you click that link and you go to that channel to watch that video, make sure you guys subscribe to his channel because he is very knowledgeable whenever it comes to screen printing. All right, so John from Taino Inc., he's really cool. I asked him if I could use his video in this video so that I could follow along with what he did in that video to try to get this right here. Right, so as you can see, we got some pretty good half tones right here, and this was done in Photoshop. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the screen, and we're gonna attempt to do what he did. He did a really good job on his print. I'm probably not gonna get a really good print like that because this is my first time using half tones with Photoshop. So we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna see what we come out with. So let's go ahead, jump in the screen, and get this started. All right, so here we are. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the screen. Um, what I'm gonna be doing is screen recording, right? Um, I'm going to jump into Photoshop. I'm going to have Photoshop on one side. I'm going to have John's video playing on the other side. So as his video is playing and he's telling me or telling us what to do to get those nice half tones, I'm going to be doing it at the same time, right? So um, I've already watched the video. I've already, so I basically already know what he's going to be telling me what to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the process on the way he does it, right? So hopefully um, whenever he's talking the Yeti microphone that I have right here will pick up what he's telling me to do. I'm pretty sure it will. But like I said, we're going to go through the process. We're going to see if we can get the same result that he did. All right, so just keep in mind that this image is very pixelated. I wish they would have had the Adobe Illustrator file because it makes it a whole lot easier whenever it comes to half tones or separating colors at that, right? So we're going to go ahead, jump into this video and jump into Photoshop so that we can go step by step and he can show us exactly how to create half tones in Photoshop. All right, so here we are. If you look at this image right here, it says thumbnail. You see that it's 1080 by 1080, which is a pretty decent um, PNG file, right? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna close this out. And if you look up here, same one that we're using, the PNG, the thumbnail PNG, right? So um, with this image, if you look at it, whenever I zoom it in, um, it looks good here, right? It doesn't look bad. But whenever you zoom it in is whenever you see how pixelated it is, All right? This is why I tell you, um, even whenever they send you the PNG file, make sure it's a high, high resolution PNG file so that you will eliminate any of the problems this person is having right here. But it's because they can't get the actual um, Adobe Illustrator file, which is the best. If you get someone that creates it, either they're going to create it on Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw or something like that. So they can send you um, the file. If you're ordering it from someone um, that's creating your design, make sure that it tells you in their description exactly what files you're gonna be getting, all right? So double check that, just save you a headache, right? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, and minimize this, and then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna bring up our video of John speaking about how he does it whenever it comes time to do um, halftones, right, with Photoshop. I've never done it before. That's why we're gonna watch him whenever we do it. All right, so I got my whole image in here. Um, if you guys do not follow him, you guys need to go follow him. Um, if you follow me, you should definitely be following him. He knows a lot more about screen printing um, whenever it comes time to this stuff. So um, if you're a subscriber of mine and you watch my videos, make sure you get over there. There's his name right here on the bottom, Dino Inc got 12,000 subscribers um, you guys need to go over there and check them out um, the nine people that gave them thumbs down haters that's all they are haters all right so let's go ahead get into this video and as he's talking about what he's gonna do we are going to be um, doing it over here all right 
Today we're talking about a one color half tone screen printing. One color. And we're gonna be using Photoshop. Using I'm gonna show you my way of how I set up any picture, any image, and set it up into half tone into a one color print. I know I've done this bit video before, but the difference is that we're gonna do it on black t-shirts, how to convert that into just a one color white print using a 230 screen and giving you that nice, beautiful look. So let's get started. All right, so he's doing it on a black shirt. I'm doing it on a white shirt because like I said, inside of here, we have white, right? So we are gonna be stopping at a certain point whenever he gets to there. So let's go ahead and let him um, demonstrate what he's doing. And while he's demonstrating it, I'm gonna do it over here. Here, this is the one I'm doing. This is for a job a client wants. He wants to give it as a gift to all his kids and cousins. Good idea. He just wants black t-shirts, one color print. So first thing you do, once you have the image, duplicate that same image. All right, I'm not gonna duplicate okay. it because I'm just doing black and white now, as it is. Now move it to the side. Right, but if you're doing color, that's where you wanna change it right there. So here we have both. The next thing you do is you want to go to image and go to image size. Image size. And let's right. go to document size. And I'm using a 13 by 19, but I don't want it that big. So I'm just going to go with an 11. So I'm going to do the same thing point, as... um, 69. That's good. Once you have the width, the height is going to be there, 15. But on resolution, change it to 300. 300. Every time you want to do this, you want that resolution at 300, the best that you can. So here it is. That looks good right now. Now you're going to come, make sure you fit on screen, and here we got it. Beautiful. It looks even a little more better. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go to image, mode, then you're going to grayscale. Image. It's going to ask you this card mode, color information, discard. Get that out of the way. Now, as you see, we have the gray scale. <clears throat> All right, so ours is already gray scale, so we're good. But as you guys see, what he told us to do there, um, it did fix it a little bit. You know what I mean? Now we could, whenever we zoom in here, it's not as pixelated. I mean, it is pixelated, but it takes a lot more of the zoom before it starts to pixelate. All right, so we come down here. Look at that. So we will have a nice sharper image than what we had the first time. All right, so let's go ahead and get back in here and see what he has to say. Half tones. We want to go to image, adjustment, image, adjustment layer, and then go to levels. Levels. Now here's right. the levels. What you want to do is you want to make sure you want to get a My little levels. darker than usual, just to make sure that all the things are going to come out nice. Okay. See, right here, right here, I think that's going to be good enough, let me bring it more a little bit over here, because I want to see this part here, or the background, the numbers, so now I'll press OK. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with it now, um, he said just to mess with your levels, I, mean, I guess until basically what it is what you like, so we're going to zoom in a little bit here, we're just going to move these around. If I move it too far, you see what it's doing. All right, move it back to where it was. Uh, let's see what we got here. We move this dark one. It's going to make it darker. We don't want that because we want to keep that uh, grayscale in there, right? That's too much. And I think, I think where we're at, I'm just going to hit cancel because I think where this is at, it's already good. Um, th like, again, this what he's doing here is for... A full color picture turn, turning it into a grayscale right um, ours was already a grayscale so I'm gonna skip that part right there once you already do that now we are going to the halftone and it's a very easy process what so you gotta do is do go to tone. image mode image. bitmap mode. once you go to bitmap the output has to be at least the most 300 you gotta have 300. a 300 output we're dealing with a mesh 
And okay. when you go into method, what method are we using? It's a 50% threshold, pattern, um, diether, whatever it is, diffusing diether, custom. Well, we only touching, as screen printers, you're only going to be touching the half tone. So let's click on the half tone. So we click on the half tone. Half tone, 300 output, half tone, press OK. Now, it's going to ask you half tone screen. Go to Google and find out your screen. I know it's something about multiply by five, and it will give you the mesh count that you're using. I'm using a 230 mesh. That's the only thing I use is a 230 mesh when I'm messing around with these half tone, one color prints. 230 mesh, CMYK, 230 mesh, only 230 mesh. So, I'm All right. So I'm I'm going to be using 230 mesh also. So whatever he plugs in to his, I'm gonna plug into mine. I already have my number. You could go either 40 or you could go 45 you could go a little higher but remember the higher you go on your frequency the smaller the dot so it's going to be a little you're going to have to be careful washing it off <clears throat> but the best numbers for me to wash off is 45 40 i've done some with 40 but 45 now the angle is 22.5 because that's the angle that Google gave me with the mesh. When you're doing a one color print, that's the angle. Now the shape, you go in round, diamond, ellipse. You could have line squares, but a lot of people go with ellipse or round. Me, I prefer round and we're gonna press okay. So now here it is. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing that he just did. Uh, 45, 22.5, which is the angle, because we're using the same screen, 230 mesh count. And then the shapes, I'm going to go around just like he did. And then I'm going to hit OK. So now let's see what he talks about next. Check it out. Look at the dots there. Came out, coming out real nice. Click back on screen. OK. Just a little there, just to see the dots all right so let's go ahead and zoom in and see what we got so there are our half tones right there so let's go ahead and zoom into this there's our half tones can move this up we've got the nice black on that so that's good and then if we look here um, with this it's going to be darker on the outside get lighter in the inside uh, for to give that blend of black to white to give that gray look so I think that'll be pretty cool so let's go ahead um, zoom in see what else we got in here and all these little dots that you see here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in there and erase them because that is due to the white line that was in there so all I have to do to, to erase that is come in here with this so all I have to do to that is come here to this eraser tool and then just come in here and erase this before I go actually to print these uh these screens so I'll just come in here and slowly um, erase some of these little half tones that were left from the white because we're not printing the white remember like I told you uh, so we're gonna go here and we'll clean some of this up before we actually print this here alright so now that we got our image like his, what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead, let him finish explaining what else we have to do next before we go in there and erase all of that random stuff in there. Real nice. Okay, back to fit screen. Um, I'm not using a rip software, so we're gonna go with whatever it gives me i don't have that rich software too a little too expensive i'm waiting for it to drop down a little but i ain't paying for that because i don't get a lot of jobs like this if you're getting a lot of jobs like this go get that rich software it'll help you much better but me i get this maybe i get five or six maybe a year i'm not paying no rich software for that so now that we already have it in bitmap what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to image mode and we're gonna convert this back to a grayscale. Here it is, press okay. grayscale. So it's gonna ask it you back. size ratio, you keep it at one, and just you're gonna say, one? Okay. okay. Once it's okay, you're gonna look at your layer and you're gonna take it and you're gonna unlock it. All right, so there's, your, there's our layer right there. So we click it, it unlocks it. 
and we're good to go. So let's see what else he has to say. That's already ready to do the other thing of going on a black t-shirt. If we were printing a white t-shirt, you could have just left it like that. You didn't have to go nowhere. That's it. White t-shirt. But we're doing black, so we have to not. All right, so that's it. We're going on white t-shirts with this. So um, if you guys are doing black, so if you guys are doing white on black, make sure you guys go check out the rest of this video. I will put the link down in the description, or here's his name right here. Tyone Inc., check him out. Go to his channel. Make sure you subscribe to him. Very knowledgeable whenever it comes to screen printing. If you look back there in the background, there's that sexy Anatol Thunder back there. So we're both using the same press, and we're using the same um, exposing unit. So hopefully I can get a nice clean image the same way he did. So, John, I appreciate you giving me um, permission to use your video in my video. Um, so, appreciate it and keep pressing, brother. All right, so we have our image here ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this and see how it looks. All right, so like I said, I'm going to come in here and erase some of this stuff in here. All right, so I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to speed through this process. I'm not going to keep you guys waiting along, right? So here's our image. I saved it as a PNG file. I have it in Adobe Illustrator. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here, open new from template because I want to add some registration marks. Um, these don't come in here. These I made and then I saved them. So there. All right. So now that I have my registrations, I'm simply going to grab them, come to this one, and then drop them here. Right. So, all right. And then when I got these selected, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hold down select and I'm going to click this so that I have everything together. I'm going to come up here to the arrange or align to the to align it and I want to center it. So there it is, nice and centered. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go out here to the Canon Pixma that I have and I'm going to print this out. Right, so here we are in the dark room where I burned my screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using the Anatol Aurora exposing unit to expose our screen, right? So in his video, he said to use a 230 mesh. So that's what we're going to be using. Right? We're going to be using a 230 mesh. And then we're going to be using the chroma blue emulsion. All right, so here is the chroma blue emulsion. We're going to be using this. Um, this is just something that was on sale for the gallon. So instead of buying the quart, I went ahead and bought the gallon. Whenever it comes to emulsion, it's all going to depend on what you're using to burn your screens um, for your time. So for me, with this exposing unit and with this right here, I can do it for 10 seconds and it's good to go. Before this, I was using the pink stuff from Ryanet. And with the setup that I had back then, I would do it for five minutes and I had no problems at all. But with this one right here and this chroma blue, 10 seconds, I get a perfectly exposed screen. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put some emulsion on this right here. We're gonna let it dry so that we could go ahead and expose this so that we can do a test print um, and send it to the customer. All right, so I've used the emulsion before where it tells you that if you shake it or you stir it to let it sit for all the bubbles to come out of it. Um, I've never done that before, so I've always just went ahead um, shook it up just to get everything mixed up if it's been sitting for a little bit and then once I get done with that I go ahead and pour it into my scoop coater. Alright so with this image that we're doing we're going to be doing one screen so all we're going to need to do is just put enough in here to go ahead and coat that screen we don't have to overdo it because then we're going to have to wash it out anyway so. As you can see there's still bubbles all inside of this but whenever you put it on there and you get a nice even coat those bubbles will go away all right so here we are have nothing fancy that's just up against this black tote right here i'm gonna do one side and then i'm gonna flip it around and do the other um, i just put it at the bottom tilt it up in an angle once i see all the emulsion has got onto the screen I then pick it up once i get to the top i'll let it drain back in before i move it a little saw motion, 
and there it is just like that. So then I'm going to turn it around, do this side, same thing, come all the way to the top, and then take it off. If you have to, you can always go back over it again just to get any excess off. I like to do that to the front side because what happens is whenever you do the front side, you do the back side, it then pushes the emulsion through. You can leave it like that to have a thicker coat of emulsion. I don't need a thick coat, so then I just come back. So then I just come back and scoop off the rest. So that looks good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my little box over here. All right, so here's our image. Came out good. Um, it, it, just like this, with it not being so zoomed in, doesn't look as pixelated around these edges right here. But I think in all, this came out pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is our screen is dry. So we're gonna take this out to the press and we're gonna get this lined up so that we can wash it out, right? So let's go ahead and get our screen. Here's our screen right here. Nice and dry, so we're good to go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take it out there. I'm gonna show you how I line it up and then we're gonna expose it, so let's go out there. All right, so here we are with the Anatol Thunder, same exact press that John has in his video, uh, the one that was in the background, all right? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna turn our lasers on. We're gonna line up our screen. I mean, uh, we're gonna line up our print. All right, once you get the tape onto your actual print, the print side goes facing up and the slick side goes facing down if you're doing t-shirts, all right? So we're doing this on a t-shirt, print side goes facing up. We've got our tape on four corners and then we're gonna take our screen and slide it in. Slide it in where we want it. This is just a one color job, so this doesn't really matter how you put it in there. Um, what matters is whenever you put it back in, all right? So we're just gonna go ahead and bring this down. Good position right there. We're gonna tighten these up. And then we're gonna push this down. And by doing this right here, we're getting our tape to stick to the screen. All right, so our tape is sticking to the screen so that whenever I lift it up, it sticks to that. So now we're gonna take this and we're going to expose it and then wash it out. So like I said, the Anatol exposing unit. There it is. So we're going to expose this for 10 seconds, right? So the cool thing about this is it's got that suction on there. So you just put it in there, put it how you want it. Some people will put it all the way to the back. However you want to put it, it's your preference, right? You just close it up. I have mine programmed for number two, five PSIs. And then if we look right here, there's five PSIs for 10 seconds and then Whenever you're ready, you just hit the play button. You're going to see the vacuum happen, and then it'll expose it, and then we'll wash it out. All right, and then as you can see, it says exposing is done. We're going to open it up. You guys saw that was 10 seconds. I went to go turn the water on and turn on the pressure washer and it had already went off. So let's go ahead, come over here so you can wash this out. All right, so I don't have an actual um, washout booth. I just use, we have a shower here, so I just use this and I plug that into my pressure washer. I use the white tip because it's so it gives pressure, it just doesn't give too much pressure, right? It's more of a fan instead of a straight hit, all right? So then... We'll do one side, and as you can see, it's already starting to wash out with those 10 seconds, right? So now we're going to do the other side.
see those half tones in there, it looks good. We're gonna flip it over, do the other side one more time. Not too much, but just enough. All right, so I think we're good. And then I just hang it like that. All right, and then when I'm done with it, I like to bring it out here, hold it up to this light and look at it, see how it looks. And to me, it looks good. So we'll see whenever we print it. So I'm gonna let this thing dry and I'll probably wait till tomorrow to print it, but there it is. You can see the half tones in there. All right, so here's our screen. We're gonna go ahead. It's nice and ready to go. See those half tones in there? So we're gonna go out there, take it to the press, and give it our test print. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna slide our screen in. We are then going to turn on our lasers. Once we have our lasers on, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna line up the lasers with our registration marks right here. Once you get your registration marks lined up here, lined up down there, you can go ahead and tighten these up. All right, so we're gonna be doing this, like I said, on a white shirt with black ink. So here is the sheet that I'm gonna be using, the Pellon sheet, test sheet that I'm gonna be using for my test print. Instead of using a t-shirt, you use this right here. All right, so I'll put the link down in the description for this. All right, so I don't have any sticky double-sided PMI tape on here. So I'm gonna bring the next one over. And I'm just gonna put it on here just like this. Make sure you get all the way to your registration marks so you don't get any ink on your palette. We can do our test print. All right, so let's try this out. All right, so here's our first print right here. Came out pretty good, but what I'm gonna do again is what I forgot to do is check the off contact on this. So make sure you check the off contact on this. Make sure you got enough space between the print and the actual palette, right? So you can get a better print. Um, we're gonna do it again. This looks good anyways, but we're gonna do it one more time. Much better, that looks good. So here is our second print. You can see how we got that faded look in there with the half tones. So look at that. So we're gonna run this by the customer. Once they approve it, we'll go ahead and start printing the rest of the t-shirts. All right, so here we are, the customer, they went ahead and they approved the artwork. So now what we're gonna do is since we have our test print done, we're gonna go ahead, load up a shirt. This is just a random shirt that I have. And we're gonna do a test print on the actual shirt now. And then whenever we get done, if it turns out good, we'll start printing them on the shirts that they ordered. All right, so now that we got the shirt on there, what I did is I moved this laser down a little bit so that it's three fingers underneath the collar right here so that whenever I put my image, I know exactly where it's gonna go when I put it there, right? So when I bring this over, make sure you have all your registration marks taped off and we'll give it our first print.
right so there it is this print looks really good you can see the half tones in there not sure if you can see them on the camera or not but in person they look really really good so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead start loading up these shirts start printing them so we can finish this order And I think if you guys can see this, I'll zoom in on it. Um, with one pass, we are good. I'm gonna bring you in here, show you exactly what I'm talking about so you guys can see this. All right, so hopefully you can see the half tones in that. And it looks good, just like that. So I think we're gonna do one pass so that we don't put too much ink on there and take away these half tones. All right, so my last file corrupted. So we're gonna go through these last six shirts that I got. And we're gonna print these and go through a little bit of the process of what's left, right?
right, so that's it. I just want to say thank you to John for letting me add his little clips to this video right here. Um, if you guys are interested, like I said, I'm going to put the link down below so you guys can check out that video. If you guys are trying to do half tones without a program, like you said, it's expensive to purchase a program. And if you don't have jobs that are, you're doing it all the time, then it's probably not worth it. So um, go down below, click that link. And if you're using Photoshop, he's going to show you exactly how you could turn a regular photo into half tones. And last, I want to say thank you guys for all the support. We started this year with 10,000 subscribers, and my goal was to hit 12,000 more to hit 22,000 subscribers um, by January 1st. And here we are, uh, January 1st, and we hit 27,000 plus subscribers. So thank you guys for all the support, all the positive feedback you guys have given me. I appreciate every single one of you. All right, so I'm excited about 2021. And no better way to start 2021 with some new equipment. So let me show you what we got. All right, so here is the new equipment for 2021. I'm excited to uncrate this, get it set up, and then I can put a video together for you guys. Uh, we are going to do an uncrating video for you guys, but new equipment for 2021. Some of you already know what this is. So stay tuned to the next video. And I will show you exactly what this is. I'm not the one that's going to keep you guys in suspense and tell you video after video that I got something new and keep playing it off, right? So here it is, the Racoma MT-1501. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the process of uncreating this thing. So thank you guys for watching another one of my videos. Stay safe, stay healthy, happy New Year's, and keep pressing.